Ngayon, pag natin dito is about finding the missing term in a proportion. Yung mga types ng proportion, direct proportion, indirect proportion, pwedeng indirect or inverse proportion. Pa and partitive proportion. Direct proportion. So, sabi dito, direct proportion is a situation where an increase in one quantity causes a corresponding increase in the other quantity. So, kung yung isang quantity, nag-increase siya, yung, other, yung corresponding quantity niya, mag increase din. On the other hand, kapag nag-decrease yung one quantity, yung corresponding quantity niya, mag decrease din. Yun yung direct proportion. Bibigyan natin yan ng example. Halimbawa sa cost ng lapis natin. Cost ng lapis natin, is 7. Ngayon, dinagdagan mo ng dalawa. Bumili ka ng dalawang lapis. So, mag increase din yung price. Kung yung unang lapis, kailangan mo ng 7 pesos. Sa pangalawang lapis, kailangan mo ng 14 pesos. Sa pangatlong lapis, kailangan mo ng 21 pesos. So, ganun yung direct proportion. nag increase ang quantity, yung corresponding quantity niya din, mag increase din. Same thing kapag nag-decrease yung isang quantity, mag decrease din yung corresponding quantity niya din. So, meron pala tayong um, dalawang method paano mag-solve ng proportion. Unang method natin is the cross product. Use the cross product method, cross multiplication lang. Try natin. So, 1 fourth is equals to 3n. So, find the missing term. Yung n na to, ito yung missing term natin na hahanapin natin. Ngayon, gamit yung cross multiplication, makukuha natin yung missing term. Halimbawa, 1 times n is equals to 4 times 3. And 1n is equals to 12. 1 times n is equals to 1n. 4 times 3 is equals to 12. Ngayon, usually, i-divide lang natin to sa um, GCF ng dalawang number, ng 1 at 12. Pero usually, dinidivide natin to sa kung ano yung merong kasama ng n. Divide natin siya sa 1. n is equals to 12. Value ng n dito is 12. Pag may nag-multiply mo yan, 1 times 12 is equals to 12. 4 times 3 is equals to 12. So, they are proportion. They are equal. Gets? Next example, n over 3 is equals 28 over 12. 7 po. Tingnan natin po 7 talaga. Let's see. So, una, n times 12 is equals to 3 times 28. 12 n. n times 12 is equals to 12 n is equals to 84. 3 times 28 is equals to 84. So, divide natin to sa 12. Sabi ko nga sa inyo, usually, dinidivide lang siya sa ano yung kasama ng n. Pero, dapat, i-divide siya sa greatest common factor nila. Kakancel natin yung 12. So, magiging n na lang yan. So, n is equals to 7. Okay, very good. So, the answer is 7. So, this is the first method na pag-compute or pag-solve ng direct proportion. Second, we have this one, multiply natin yung means at saka yung extremes. So, yung means, yung nasa loob, yung extreme, yung nasa labas. Yung A is the first term, B is the second term, C is the third term, and then D is the fourth term. Again, yung means yung nasa loob, yung, yung extreme, yung nasa labas. Means, and then extremes. So, multiply natin yung dalawang nasa loob. Uh, six, N times 3 is equals Apo. to 6 times 2. Ganun lang, same lang din. Kaya lang, mumultiply lang natin nasa loob. Not unlike kanina sa cross multiplication. 3n is equals to 12. So, saan natin ito divide Sa 3. Anong sagot? Palagay nyo? 4. Okay, very good. So, n is equals to 4. Another example. So, 3 to 7 equals n is to 35. Multiply lang yung means yung nasa loob, yung dalawang nasa loob. And then, mumultiply ulit yung dalawang nasa Labas, which is the extreme. Sagot? 15 po. Okay, let's see. If this is 15. Okay, so first, 3 times 35, n times 7. 3 times 35 is 105. n times 7 is equals 7n. So, divide natin sa parehong 7. Kaya natin makukuha yung 15. Ganun lang siya. Ganun lang din yung mga example sa modules nyo. Ito, and ganyan lang yan. Cross multiplication lang tayo dyan. Activity 1 nyo, direct proportion to, no?